Now, for my pad world, we're going to add the interface objects for our modal view, which offers the settings that users can change. This is sort of the model of what we're doing, as you can see in the Flipboard app. Flipboard uses a modal view for its settings. The modal view is on the right side. Now, many development teams include user interface designers working side by side with programmers. The interface designer can design the look and feel of the view, and the programmer can connect the view's interface objects to the code that performs the tricks. Xcode is easy to use by both the designer and the programmer. I'm going to show you how, as a designer, you can easily set up the user interface without knowing anything about programming, and then later, I'll show you how the programmer connects the interface objects to the code. Xcode's Interface Builder is a great editor for graphically laying out your user interface. You can use it to design your app's user interface and then save what you've done as a resource file, which is then loaded into your app at runtime. Interface Builder works with what are called nib files, which is based on an older format that used the .nib extension. There's a newer format that uses the .xib extension, and although the file extension is .xib, everyone still calls them nib files. And that's probably because exib is too hard to say. The term nib and the corresponding file extensions NIB and XIB are really acronyms for Next Interface Builder. What that means is the Interface Builder application was originally developed at Next Computer, which is the company Steve Jobs founded after first leaving Apple, and whose OpenStep operating system was used as the basis for creating Mac OS X, and that happened when Steve came back to Apple and Apple bought Next Computer. Interface Builder doesn't generate any code that you have to modify or even look at. Instead, it creates the ingredients for instant Objective-C objects that the nib loading code combines and turns into real objects at runtime. Now, back at MyPad World, we want to open the modal view controller in Interface Builder. And in order to do that, we click on settingsviewcontroller.xib. Here is the nib file for our modal view controller. If we scroll it up here, we'll see there's a status bar. If we scroll across, we'll see the battery icon. We have our dock along the side here with files owner, first responder, and view. We can just select view, and here we have the view. And we can scroll up again to see our left corner where we want to put our first interface object. Our first interface object is going to be the done button. Now to add the done button, we go over here to objects in the library, and we look for round rect button, which is right here. Round rec button implements a button that intercepts touch events. It sends an action message to a target object. Again, the target action pattern. So let's click this done here, and we're going to drag the round rec button into place on our user interface. And as we drag it, guides will appear to help us place it. There's one guide for the top and the other guide. We'll put it right there. Let's make sure that's where we want it, right there. Now, since we selected the view first, as you'll see if we open the dock here, you'll see that that button was created where we want it to be created, inside the view. Now that we have selected button, we can click the Attributes tab here to see the Attributes Inspector. And of course, as you know, you can always choose View, Utilities, Attributes Inspector. And of course, if the Utility pane is not open, if it looks like this, Click here to open it. So the attribute inspector shows the button attributes. What we want to do is in the type pop-up menu, we want to create a custom button. We want to change its text color right here to white by clicking in the center and dragging all the way up in the colors pane and closing that by clicking there. And we don't want a shadow color. We want to click here and make that clear color. And we don't need the colors pane for that. We can simply select clear color here so that we don't have a shadow. Finally, in the title field here, we type the word done. Now, as we click somewhere else, we see the word done appears in the middle of the button. And if we want to, we can also make the text bigger by clicking here in the font field. It brings up the fonts panel and allows us to select a higher font size, say 18 or even 24, but I think 18 will look better. And we can close the fonts panel by clicking the red button here. So now we want to add the slider and the text field. If we go down to the library again, and we look under the pop-up menu to controls, 
scroll down, we'll see both the slider and the text field. We'll start with the slider. You select it, you see that a message pops up and tells us all about it. It displays a horizontal bar called a track that represents a range of values. It's the very same slider we used in the iPhone version My World app. So we click Done here. So we want to make sure View is selected, which it is. And then we can close the disclosure triangle on the dock so that we can see more of the view. And we can scroll to see where our Done button is, which is right there. We want to drag our slider to be roughly there. And we can move our slider around. And we can scroll the view to keep moving it to where we want. Now we're building this view sort of in the upper left corner because we know it's going to be smaller than what we see in the interface builder. But we can stretch our slider. Now we can open the dock again and see that horizontal slider has now been added to the view. We select horizontal slider so that we can change its attributes. The attributes inspector is already visible, but in case it wasn't, we would click here to make it visible. And what we want to do is change the minimum, maximum, and current values. So the minimum value is set to zero, and we want to set our maximum value to 20, and our current value to 10. Now when we close this, we'll see what I just did, is set the slider to be zero down here, 20 at the other end, and 10 in the middle, which is the, set, the current setting. We can see that we can probably move the slider over just a wee bit just about to there. Probably be plenty of room for it. Now we're going to perform a similar procedure with the text field object in the interface builder. We're going to open the dock by clicking down here at the disclosure triangle. And we're going to make sure view is selected. Then we're going to close the dock so that we can see where we're dragging our new object to and scroll over to it. Text field is right here and you can see that it displays a rounded rectangle that can contain editable text so that when a user taps a text field, a keyboard appears. And when a user taps return in the keyboard, the keyboard disappears and the text field can handle the input. And as you remember, we put in the method to deal with the text field and to make sure that we've dealt with the return key. So let's click Done here, and let's drag this text field underneath the slider, right about there. We'll drag its edges out so there's plenty of room. In fact, guides show up to position it in relation to the slider so that it's exactly the same size. So we're going to change a few attributes. We're going to click the clear when editing begins so that it's an like absolute clear field when you start to type. We have adjust to fit so that we can fit any size phrase. Choose a different border style just because we can. It'll probably look better when we do our gray background. And one more thing we'll want to do is change the text color and we'll change it to white. So you can see all we had to do is select it right here in the pop-up menu. Our font is set to 12 point Helvetica, which is fine. The minimum font size is 17 pixels in case we're really typing something long and it needs to fit in the box. Next, we wanna add a label object. The label, of course, is going to show the actual value of the speed slider. A label is also a form of control. We'll find it up here in the controls right here. And what it really is is a read-only text view. It can contain an arbitrary amount of text, but may shrink or wrap or truncate the text depending on the size of the bounding rectangle. But in any case, all it's going to show for us is a number, so we don't have that problem. We'll click Done, and we'll drag our label up over the speed slider, say right about here. And with it selected, we can change its attributes. Now, the only attributes we may be interested in changing, I think, would be the text color again. We want that to be white. Adjust to fit is already set, the font is just fine, and everything else looks good. Now the last thing we want to do here to complete the modal dialogs view is to change the view's background color. So let's open the dock again by just clicking the disclosure triangle down here and select view. And by this we're selecting the entire view. You'll notice that we have our button, horizontal slider, text field, and label all within this view. Now we would again click the Attributes Inspector button here, but it's already open for us. And what we want to do is set the background color, so that's here in this pop-up. And what we want to use is a View Flip Side Background Color. By choosing that, what that does is returns the system color used for the back side of a view while it is being flipped. That's what's going to look really cool 
for our modal dialog. And now it's really ready for use. Now remember, don't forget to save your changes by choosing File, Save. Well, now the designer is finished with the view. And so now the designer can turn this project back over to the programmer to connect those interface objects in the view to the code.